The Smartest Giant in Town by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. George was a giant, the scruffiest giant in town. He always wore the same pair of old brown sandals and the same old patched gown. I wish I wasn't the scruffiest giant in town, he said sadly. But one day George noticed a new shop. It was full of smart clothes. So he bought a smart shirt, a smart pair of trousers, a smart belt, a smart stripy tie, some smart socks with diamonds up the sides, and a pair of smart shiny shoes. Now I am the smartest giant in town, he said proudly. George left his old clothes behind in the shop. He was about to go home when he heard a sound. On the pavement stood a giraffe who was sniffing sadly. What's the matter? asked George. It's my neck. It's so very long and so very cold. I wish I had a long warm scarf. Cheer up, said George. He took off his stripy tie. It didn't match my socks anyway, he said as he wound it round and round the giraffe's neck. It made a wonderful scarf. Thank you, said the giraffe. As George strode home, he sang to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. But look at me up and down, I am the smartest giant in town. George came to the river. On a boat stood a goat who was bleating loudly. What's the matter? said George. It's my sail, said the goat. It blew away in the storm. I wish I had a strong new sail for my boat. Cheer up, said George, and he took off his new white shirt. It kept coming untucked anyway, he said as he tied it to the mast of the goat's boat. It made a magnificent sail. Thank you, said the goat. George strode on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a tall giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. But look me up and down, I'm the smartest giant in town. And then George came to a tiny ruined house. Beside the house stood a white mouse with lots of baby mice. They were all squeaking. What's the matter? said George. It's our house, squeaked the mother mouse. It burnt down and now we have nowhere to live. I wish we had a nice new house. Cheer up, said George. He took off one of his shiny shoes. It was giving me blisters anyway, he said, as the mouse and her babies scrambled inside. The shoe made a perfect home for them. Thank you, they squeaked. George had to hop along the road now, but he didn't mind. And as he hopped, he sang to himself. My tie as a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. But look me up and down, I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a campsite. Beside a tent stood a fox who was crying. What's the matter? asked George. It's my sleeping bag, said the fox. I dropped it in a puddle. I wish I had a warm, dry sleeping bag. He took off one of his socks with diamonds up the sides. It's tickling my toes anyway, he said, as the fox snuggled in it. It made a very fine sleeping bag. Thank you, said the fox. George hopped on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. But look me up and down, I'm the smartest giant in town. George came to a big squelchy bog. Beside the bog stood a dog who was howling. What's the matter? said George. It's the bog, said the dog. I need to get across, but I keep getting stuck in the mud. I wish there was a safe, dry path. Cheer up, said George. He took off his smart new belt. 
to squashing my tummy anyway, he said, as he laid it down on the bog. It made an excellent path. Thank you, said the dog. The wind started to blow, but George didn't mind. He hopped on, singing to himself. My tie is a scarf for a cold giraffe. My shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. My shoe is a house for a little white mouse. One of my socks is a bed for a fox. My belt helped a dog who was crossing a bog, but... My trousers are falling down and I am the coldest giant in town. Suddenly George felt sad and shivery, not at all smart. He stood up on one foot and thought, I have to go back to the shop and buy some more clothes, he decided. He turned round and hopped all the way back to the shop. But when he got there, it was closed. Oh no, said George. He sank down on the doorstep. A tear ran down his nose. He felt as sad as all the animals he had met on his way home. Then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw a bag with something familiar poking out of the top. George took a closer look. My gown, he yelled. My dear old gown and sandals. George put them on. They felt wonderfully comfortable. I am the coziest giant in town, he cried. And he danced back home along the road. Outside his front door stood all the animals that he had helped. They were carrying an enormous present. Come on, George, they said, open it. George untied the ribbon. Inside was beautiful gold paper, crown and a card. Look inside the card, George, said the animals. So George put the crown on his head and he opened the card. And inside it said, Your tie's a scarf for a cold giraffe. Your shirt's on a boat as a sail for a goat. Your shoe's a house for a little white mouse. One of your socks is a bed for a fox. Your belt helped the dog who was crossing a bog. So here is a very fine crown to go with the sandals and gown of the kindest giant in town.